Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za Hello and welcome to Creative Ghettos, the show that explores various creative industries and profiles the Africans who push them forward. Each week I will spend 30 minutes unveiling excellent and exciting progress within creative industries, including but not limited to visual art, architecture, design, food, film and publishing. My name is Gwane Lukunene. Thank you for joining me right here on brandlive.co.za. Today in studio, I have someone who epitomizes what Creative Ghettos is all about, which is seeing through the veil of popular industries to find, start and succeed at an, at an idea that basically no one really wants to touch. Braving through uncharted territory is what Latavo Mokwena decided to do in 2015 when he started sneaker cleaning and shoe care service Walk Fresh. He's here to tell us more about the business and the things he's had to learn along the way. Letavo, thank you so much for stepping in for the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Cool. It's good to be here. Ah, thank you. <laughs> you have a nice space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, so let's just start with your background. Just a little brief, you know, history. Yeah. What were you doing before you started Walk Fresh? And when did you realize that this is the craft that you wanted to contribute to? Um, I started Walkfresh 2015 in Feb. Uh, this was right after I graduated and I had a job offer from Jupiter Drawing Board. But because I had spent like a, a huge part of my varsity life going up and down, trying to pay my varsity fees, trying to pay rent uh, because I was financing my own studies, getting a nine to five was so foreign for me. I was like, yes, okay, he has a very dope job, a very dope agency, but do I really want to do it? Then... This one time I was coming back from work. So I'm from Davidson, just to give a brief. Uh, I'm from Davidson, born and bred. Uh, yeah. Scott Paula, East Rand. East Rand. What's up? up. <laughs> um, <laughs> born and bred, went to my boy high school. It's another ta- township high school. Very dope one. Mm. Uh, then I went to Boston, studied public relations for a year. And then I went to UJ, studied corporate communications. I majored in strategic communications. That's just like a brief background. Uh, so when I graduated, mind you, I had like filled... Varsity, I think twice. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so so when I, I just after graduating, I was interning at Jupiter and I was working at Sony Mobile as a brand activator. Then one time I'm, I'm coming back from work, I'm sitting at the shops, Namachita, like we always do. And one of my friends has his mom's shoes. He's cleaning them while we're sitting there. Mm. And because I, I'm always pressed for time, I have two jobs, you know, I'm mm. running up and down. I ask him, yo, why don't you get paid for doing this, dog? You know, because I know I would pay you. I don't have time to clean sneakers. I love sneakers. Yeah. But I don't, honestly don't have time to clean sneakers. We can have to spend time with my girl, with my family and all of that. And naturally, everyone laughed at me at the shops. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because everyone was like, I, yeah. Never. Yeah. <laughs> but because, um, funny enough, the, the previous year in December, end of the year, I was saying to my to my closest friend, I was like, yo, man. Something big is about to happen. I don't know what it is. Like, I've struggled so much in varsity. Something huge has to happen, you know. Mm. And when I got the job offer, I thought that was it. But I was like, nah, this is not big enough, you know. Then when the idea came, when I got that idea at that moment, I was like, ooh, deep down, I was like, okay, this is it. And I said to the guys, okay, if I do this, who's willing to work with me? Because I'm, I still have a job, you know. Okay. And I'm talking to eight people who are unemployed who are sitting there. Yeah. And two of them were like, yeah, actually, we'll join you if you started, you know. Following day, I parked my car. I bought a monthly ticket for the train, Metro Rail. I used my petrol money to buy material. Uh, then I started Walk Fresh. That's how it started. Wow. So you, so your team is actually your friends, your group of friends. Yeah. So what happened was that the two people that I started with, the one actually started with three people. The other two just quit along the way, maybe like two months into it. Okay. Because obviously we're not making any money. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, then... As we grew, then uh, uh, some of my other peers or my friends, the cool thing is that all my, my employees, my team rather, uh, as my childhood friends, you know, mm. then everyone else, we just grew together. Three years later, we had seven people full-time, excluding me. Um, we have a nice shop, we have a car, all those things. So, yeah. 
And uh, tell me about learning about shoes and because once you learn about the products that clean shoes, you have to know about the fabrics and yeah. what goes together yeah. and what will really ruin them. Yeah. Um, where did you get this knowledge? How much research and where did you do the research in order to, to learn more about sneaker fabric or shoe fabrics? So here's the thing about sneaker cleaning and shoe care rather. Um, we never say we are the first sneaker cleaners or shoe care company in, in, in Davidson or in South Africa because just like many other things, it's part of our culture as a people in the township. These mm -hmm. are the little things that we've been doing for forever. Yeah. It's just that we haven't been able to identify them as markets. Yes. Someone did that with Kota. Kota Joe saw that, then they capitalized on it. Yeah. We're just doing the same thing, but with sneaker cleaning, you know. But the difference with this one is that unlike Kota Joe, it's a restaurant, it's food, there's dietary, or whatever, whatever. With us, everything had to be self-taught. Okay. You know, Google was my best friend for the first two years. <laughs> I promise you now. Like every two days, I'm on Google trying to figure out what kind of suede materials there is, what kind of fabric, what kind of suede reacts to water. How does this react? Some suede bleeds when it touches water. Some suede dries up when it touches water. So I had to know the fox suede, the soft leather, all those things. You know, and I had to ask questions. So I, I met up with a lot of people that own laundromats. And I had to say to them, yo, I clean sneakers. What? What's the difference? Mm. I should have, and they were like, we don't know. We've never cleaned sneakers. Okay. You know? So, and most most of the stuff that we did was trial and error, honestly. Like, we... we trial and so error on whose shoes, though? Honestly, <laughs> I'm not even going to mess with you. Like, some of my clients' shoes, but majority of my shoes, you know, because okay. I was comfortable saying, okay, guys, I've had the shoes for five years. Let's try this out on it. Mm. You know, and we had YouTube videos. So every second or third, Friday or Thursday, I used to have like mini workshops with my team. So I download a YouTube video, then I'll call Tabang and, and Kamakhela to my house and I'm like, okay, come check this out. Then we look at uh, international brands like Jason Mark, um, Shoes and Care from Indonesia, all those brands. Then we look at how they do it and we obviously customize it to our context because I mean, they walk on tar, we have mud things okay. like that we yeah. have to put that into consideration so you were making them well you were cleaning specifically for the area yes. in which ah okay yes, okay yes. yeah so, yeah so when we when we build we want to make sure that we cater for our needs you know it's, yeah. not, it's not a universal thing we want to mm. make sure that because I mean the debt that we deal with not something that a person who's cleaning sneakers in New York is dealing with yeah yeah they, they don't have heavy rainfalls like we do it's that they have snow Things like that, like factor in when you when you decide on the type of service you want to offer, which gives it a very unique angle, yeah. because it's almost as if you have to do, um, like correct market research about yeah. the environment, the people, yeah. what what it is that they do on a regular basis. Because I know my shoes, for example, they get dirty in a different way for driving. Yes, you know. Yeah, by the heel there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then tell me the products that you clean with. Are there any, I, I assume when you first started, you were buying things and yeah. from different stores. But now, third year in, are you making any of your own products? Uh, we actually have our own product right now that we're using. We've been using it for the past 10 months. Um, we're almost happy with it. When we put it out to market, we want to make sure that we put out something that's really effective and that's going to speak to our market because especially with product, you want to build a product on insights. You don't just want to cut and paste what's in the market because yeah. then why are you doing it? You know, So we want to we want to put out a product that's going to speak to you. If we're selling it to you, that's going to speak to your granny because people like want to box us into being a sneaker cleaner company, mm. but we do sneaker cleaning and shoe care. Yeah, yeah. We repair shoes, we repair high heels, we repair your mom's boots for winter. We do this and that. It's just like a whole integrated service, you know. So even when we do a, like create a product, which we already have, that we're already using on people's shoes, mm. we want to make sure that we don't just find it at Shesha because mm -hmm. that's what's currently happening. Sneaker cleaning products are found in sneaker shops. Mm, do you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. but sneaker shops, normally sneaker heads go to sneaker shops. But what happens to people who are not sneaker heads, but have sneakers? Yeah. You have runners, you know yeah. the sneaker head. Yeah. You put them at Markham's or cross trainers or whatever, you know. Who are you, who's gonna take care of those? So we wanna we're building a product based on that. So we're already having our product, we're working with a couple of people. Uh, to, we're looking to launch it in November this year. Mm. It was supposed to be December last year, but I wasn't very comfortable with it. I felt like it was too soon. And and I felt like there's still a lot of things that we had to like figure out. For example, the current product is liquid based. Okay. And how it's normal. And this is a New York, this is an American uh, a way of doing it where you don't immerse the shoes in water and you just dab the, the, the solution into the brush and whatever. But what we've learned is that 
in South Africa, when something is not in water, it's not clean. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that will mess with your shoes, though. You know, you know exactly. <laughs> so we had to look at things like that and say, okay, how do we then move around it and make a product that's going to speak to what our people do, but yeah. still be effective and not mess up your shoes? So that's what we, we currently work on. And and tell me, what, what does the product do specifically? So the, the product... Okay, one, one thing it does, I know for a fact, you know when you clean white shoes or white sneakers rather, like they have yellow marks mm. when they dry up. It prevents that. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, you know, so it prevents that <laughs> and it, it, it helps you clean suede way more, much more easier yeah. without your, your suede being uh, um, um, bleeding, without your suede fading out because sometimes, actually most of the time when you clean your suede, it fades out. Mm. You know, mm. it's what I would say about blackish. It's not yeah. just like black, you know. So it helps with things like that. But it's an, it's an all-round product that you can use on all styles, suede, leather. You know, it's, it's very bio-friendly. Yeah. Now, tell me, I was looking through your Instagram, the yeah. Walk, pra- the walk, walk Fresh, fresh page, yeah. uh, uh, Instagram page, yeah. and I am scrolling through going, hmm, these sneakers are expensive, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. people, you have a clientele that has some high-end yes. shoes. Yes. A person bringing in shoes like that, and even for anyone, really, yeah. How do you ensure the security of these shoes in terms of the cleaning? Yeah. That I'm giving them to you and they're not going to come back yeah. looking like something yeah. Different. Yeah, different. How do you, yeah, how do you ensure that security? Um, so so there's, there's, it's, it's two, it has two facets. Mm. And I'm, I'm a very frank person, you know. I don't, I don't like beating around the bush. Um, so we, we're insured. We're, we're insured with assurance. Um, so if anything happens to your shoes, if a natural disaster, whatever happens to your shoes, we'll pay for it, you know. Okay. But in terms of you giving us your shoe and saying, how do I know that my shoe will come back like this? Uh, we, we deal on what we call a secondhand base. Just as much as if you chop off your, shoe, your, your clothes at the laundromat. Okay. How do you know that your T-shirt won't come back with a shoulder stretch? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's what we've done. The reason why we have so many clients with high-end shoes is because we've built a brand. We were like, okay, we don't have control over, we can't say to you, oh, your shoes will be the way it was. Yeah. Only to find that you brought it to us messed up and we actually fixed it. But because you don't remember your shoe as fixed, oh, you fixed. think we messed it up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we've had people, people like, like that. those little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that had, make your shoes special and unique to them. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's yeah, this yeah. lady who had never cleaned her suede shoes. She brought them to us, we cleaned them and they were back to original. And she was like, my shoes are not like this. And we had to bring out a, a pic from Google and say, this is how your shoe is and this is how it is now. Oh, my word. And she's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, so things like that we don't have control over. So then what we do is then we build a brand that's strong enough for you to say, okay, actually, I, I trust these boys with their shoes. Hmm. And we, we deliver. I think that's the best thing we could do to deliver. You know what I like? I like the fact that you mentioned that you are insured by Outsurance. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing that I definitely want to speak more about um, as we progress. But, you know, a lot of creatives don't think about the insurance side and actually creating a proper business, even when it's still very small. Why, yeah. why, why did you immediately think this has to be done before we even go any further? Um, because I'm fortunate that I'm a creative. But at the same time, I'm a, I'm a business person. Okay. I've been exposed to business in, with regards to the businesses that I worked for, the companies that I worked for. Yeah. So then there's obviously, due to my work experience, I knew that, okay, this is how things are done from the company end. Mm. The problem about us creatives is that we are so like fixed on building brands that we don't build companies simultaneously. Mm. So when you build a brand, you build how people feel about your brand, how people feel about when they see your brand and all those uh, are nice things, mm. you know, the colors. But you have to build the company simultaneously. You have to be compliant with the labor department. You have to be insured. You have to make sure that you you you, you declare UIF. You have to pay the, the tax man, you know. Mm. And it's not easy because both things need equal attention, mm. you know. But I was fortunate enough to be from a working background and I was able to say, okay, cool. And obviously, I, I didn't know everything. I learned as I, as I yeah, went. Yeah, you, you went know. along. Mm. Uh, I, I, I ask a lot of questions. If there's someone I know that's doing something I'm interested in, I ask them, yo, how do I do this? How do mm. I do that? And as I was asking a lot of people, then I know, like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, this is what happens. And, and, and to tell you the business insurance story, actually, I wasn't smart enough to know that I had to get business insurance. I don't want people to think <laughs> he just knew. <laughs> yeah, People's shoes yeah. actually got lost. 
Oh. You know, I was working with that. So what I do is that I work with laundromats as drop of points mm. to get my service to people. So you, I'll, get, I'll tell you, okay, go to this laundromat, Auckland Park, Campus Square, ground floor, there's Preston Time Laundry, drop off your shoes there. We get them there, clean them, bring them back, you get them there. Yeah. Instead of you driving all the way to us or whatever. Yeah. So I was working with this other laundromat in the CBD and Joe work uh, by Bank City, FNB Bank City. And the laundromat lost my client's shoes. Mm. You know, and I had to pay for mm. them, you know, from my That's pocket. Stress. And this is the first year of business. Yeah. I'm not, I'm losing money. I'm bleeding money. And I was like, oh, okay, I can't have this happening again, you know. So I, I was like, oh, actually, a contingency would be business insurance. Yeah. And that's how I got to that. So mostly it's, 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 it's by experience. As you go, you learn certain things. Okay, so right now we're just going to take a really short break. I'll have more with the shoe care man himself, Latabo Mokwen. The dramatic talk with myself, Bongani Drama. Bringing you insightful conversations on the Convo Corner, your latest celebrity news on drama payment, and your latest fashion news on fashion fame. This is Bongani, Bongani, Bongani. And myself, Rose Rataka. Bringing you your latest news and sports updates. Every Wednesdays, 2 to 3 p.m. Only on www.brandlife.co.za Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za Behind sneaker shoe sneaker cleaning and shoe care company walk fresh let's have all, we were talking about business before we got into the break um the one thing that i have realized with entrepreneurs and and even creatives who focus just on the glamorous side is that they have mentors mm-hmm. who who was that for you yeah apart from google <laughs> um, look the, the, the mental thing i think Firstly, we need to be we need to be realistic, and mm. we need to bring things back home. When we say mentor, mentor, um, and in my context, the mentor is a hot man. Where I'm from, we call it a, a hot man. This yeah, yeah, someone, a hot man. A hot man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, I didn't have a mentor because the problem about mentors, not even a problem, but the thing about mentors is that they they're always busy. It's hard to find someone who gets you. Mm. It, it's hard to to find someone who believes in what you're doing. True. Because if you find someone who, who's just flattered by the fact that you want them to be your mentor, it's a waste of both your time, you know. And I'm I'm a, I'm a very straight person. I tell you, okay, this is what I'm looking to achieve. Do you think you can help me move forward? Mm. And fortunately, I attract people that are just like me, and they tell me, Nah, I can't. I don't have time, mm. you know. Mm. But what I've done is then, my peers have been my mentors, you know. Um, I've, I I have friends who are also entrepreneurs who've started their business run about the same time that I did or earlier than I did that. I then go back to and say, "Say, dog, I'm dealing with this. What do you think I can do? You know, and it, it, it's much more easier because I prefer that rather than someone who's older. Let me tell you why, because the context is different. Someone asked me, do I look up to any big brand? And I said, no, I don't look up to All Mutual. I don't look up to Liberty. I don't look up to Coca-Cola because when they were built, they, we didn't have this climate that we have right now. Okay, you know? So I, I look up to the people that are building businesses right now yeah. and I say to them, yo, how you open? How do you open a branch in KZN when the ANC is fighting like this? Yeah, yeah. Right now. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Or how do you do this when this was happening last year? Yeah. You, you know, things like that. So yeah, conditions my, were completely different. Were completely different. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the labor cost was different. Yeah. Let's be frank. You know, so I can't, I don't look up to them. I would love to, but I can't. So my peers have been my friends. Uh, Five Pen has been a very big part of me building um, the Batu homies are my friends. I, I can name a whole bunch of them, you know. Mm. And these are people that I struggle with. Mm. That when we say you on Twana, it's pay all the time. And, sure and how's them, that for you? you know? Does it like create almost a sense of comfort um, to have such camaraderie where you have, you know, your boys in in yeah. in a sense yeah. uh, um, on the come up with you because yeah, kutazana basically. It really it really does because alcoholics go to AA. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? Like alcoholics go to AA. Where do we go? We deal with depression. We deal with stress. We do all these things. But where do we go? But yeah. then if we have each other as as a, as a as a network to to work with each other and 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 cry with each other and say, "Yo, boy, um, I lost my biggest client. Dog, um, payroll is coming. I don't know what to do. What do you think I can do?" Uh, my friend was trying to open shop in Vilaga. He's actually opening shop in Vilaga, and he was like, "Yo, boy, I'm short of 3k. Mm. This project is worth 85k. I'm short of 3k. I've raised everything else." And I was like, "Yo, I have 3k. Mm. You know, things like that. You know." But if I were to go to someone who's older, who's more successful, he can relate. To him, is like 3k. How much is going to come back? Yeah, 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 yeah. But because I know he's struggling, I'm going to give it to him now. Then we'll discuss everything later. I'm like, "Okay, dog, pay the suppliers and also come and Yeah. You know, things like that. So it's very comforting. But I think you, you're you also very lucky that you guys are very honest with each other yeah. because I think it's always hard to completely open. It's You know, you make yourself vulnerable to being yeah. judged and all these things. But you are saying, listen, this is this is real. This is real I time. Think, I think more than vulnerable, we as entrepreneurs, we're so obsessed with looking successful and sounding successful before we even know what it means. So you can't tell people your problems because you got to maintain that uh, I'm the owner of Walk Fresh, la, 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 la. Yeah. No, like you have to be real and say, yo, I'm on, I'm on the come up and yeah. I'm struggling right now. And people will help you. Surprisingly enough, people will help you. Mm -hmm. So many people have helped. I'm still being helped right now because I always say, yo, guys, I'm struggling. As much as I'm successing, I'm telling people, yo, you know. And it doesn't end here. I mean, yeah. it goes on forever. Um, take us through your partnership with J&B Hive. Um, how did that come about and how has it helped elevate your 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 brand and what you do? Holistically, I think I think J and B Hive has moved from being a partnership to family. <laughs> I love yeah, that. like yeah, for me they they fam they fam. Um, so J and B Hive approached me in 2016. Uh, they were like, "Yo, look, we love what you're doing. Mm. What do you need?" And well, at that time, I was I was still working from home. I was working from a backyard mm. uh, on the ground. Uh, I was I, I was desperate for a shop because I was like, "Yo, there's so many shoes in this bedroom. I can't even walk. I need to get a shop." <laughs> and by the time they came to me, I already had a, my pitch ready. So they're like, hey, what do you need? I'm like, what? Here. And this is, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they were surprised. They were like, dude, did you know who we were coming? I was like, yo, I've been ready, you know? Um, so they came to me. We, we They helped me build my shop from scratch. Yeah. And I think what I loved about them, what I still love about them, is that they let me do it my way. You know, they're like, yo, so you have all the creative rights, whatever you want to do, just let us know. Which is the dream. Which is the dream, which is honestly the dream. Yeah. You know? So it's been very dope. Like, I think... I've been through a, a few incubators and the problem is that incubators have a preconceived idea of what we need as entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. don't ask us what we need. Mm -hmm. What's cool about the hive is that they're like, okay, dog, what do you need? Tell us what you... Be frank, be honest. If you're broke, tell us you're broke, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and above the financial assistance, it's, it's like a network. It's a home for creatives, you know? We're able to go there and say, I want to do something dope. Who wants to work with me? Okay. You know, even though you don't know what, what you want to do, but yeah. someone will be like, ah, I do sneakers, uh, I do jewelry, I do catering, I do, I'm, a, I'm an artist, let's yeah. work together, you know, so there's that spirit of working together. Like how we met. How we met, exactly, exactly, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's been a very dope journey. I, I, I still look to do more with them, but more, I was telling them even the other day, I was like, yo, I'm looking forward to be an alumni. I don't want to be here forever. I mm. need to move over for other kids yeah. to, to come experience this and, and get access to all these assets and resources that you guys have. But above everything else, I'm looking more to contributing to this so that it can grow because I know what it's done for me and my people. I would love for it to do the same for, the someone, same for else. someone else. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, creative economics. Why was it yeah. important for you to, to create that platform um, which connects creatives from yeah. different industries? Um, yeah. Why was it important to you? I, it's important. It was important when I came up with the idea. It was it was it was provoked by the fact that, like we discussed earlier on, creatives are, are so fixated fixated in, in the ideas that we have brilliant people that are stuck with the ideas, mm -hmm. and you're being paid two invoices a month, and your parent thinks this creative thing is not working. Yeah, I say this. <laughs> LLP. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, and, and, and when I sat down, I was like, it's not because we're dumb. We're flipping intelligent. We're yeah. geniuses. For you to create something, you have to be a genius. Mm. God creates, yo, you know? Yes. So, but I, I, we, we were having a conversation with a couple of my friends and I said, it's because we don't know how to build companies. We know how to build, you can design a logo, you can do all of that, but you don't know how to build a company. You don't even know where SAFS is at, mm. <laughs> you know? And I said, okay, how do we then do it? Then I was like, yo, I know so many people around the industry 
that I that I'm close friends with, you know, that I'm I have on WhatsApp and we call each other. And I was like, yo guys, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Jane B have this what I want to do. What do we think? They're like, okay, let's go. So the idea behind it is just to help creatives to build companies. Yeah. You know, and to make money. Yeah. More than anything, to make money. Let's let's tell me what you think other. about this. I was talking to someone yesterday about how, you know, even professionals who are doing law and accounting what if they would stop looking at the big companies like KPMG and actually start giving their services, providing their services to creatives so that it's also a collaboration. It is in its own way a creative collaboration. How, that would be amazing. Yeah. So that we, we would have so many dope logos. <laughs> would have so many dope... I'd, Directions like we've had so many cool things yeah, like, we, yeah, in life. Right. I that also would be think amazing. So. That would be amazing. But the problem is that in, in these law firms we have accountants heading marketing departments. So that's mm. why we keep having all these dope these whack campaigns ah, okay. that think black people want to dance and stuff. Okay, so what's next for Walk Fresh? <laughs> 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 um, yo, look, um, I, I was even saying today on Facebook, I was like, my job is to mess things up. My job is to disrupt. Yes. Uh, I don't want people to feel comfortable around me. That's not a good sign. I want people to think, eee, yes, this boy. So we want to open shop in Guamashu. Um, there's these other homies, uh, it's the big box. It's something like this, 27 boxes, mm. big box company. They have many more like this where they, they, they're very obsessed with young entrepreneurs. So mm. that's why I vibe with them. Uh, I drove down to Durban the other day, I had a chat with them. They're like, yo, come through. So right now I'm just trying to raise 100K to go to Guamashu and open a shop. And we'll see when we get there. So that's next. That's what's up. 100K. That's what's now, up. where can people find your store and keep up to date with your progress? Uh, Walk Fresh SA on Twitter and Instagram. Walk Fresh SA. Facebook, Walk Fresh. We have drop off points. That's a drop off point where you drop off your sneakers. We clean them for you. Get them back. Auckland Park, Compass Square, uh, Ground Floor. Preston Time Laundry, Randburg, Brown Fisher Road, Preston Time Laundry, Greenstone, Levenger's Dry Cleaners and Laundromats, um, Boxburg, uh, Preston Time Laundry also, Brownfontein, JNB Hive, drop off your kicks there. Then hit us up if you want to do something dope, you're a dope brand, you think we can collaborate, hit us up. We down. Cool. Latavo, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to have to uh, stop putting my sneakers through the washing machine and just let Walk Fresh do the magic for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so to find out more about the Africans who drive various creative industries forward, make sure to follow Creative Ghettos on Instagram at Creative Ghettos. My name is Gwane Lugunene. Join me again next week, Friday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. for another impactful show. Bye for now. You're listening to brandlive.co.za.